In case you were wondering, it is a great day to be alive and a great day to be in God's house. We'd like to invite and say thank you, Miss Angie, for coming to church today. She's got a battle that she's been battling, and that's between her and the Lord, and she's got some things going on, and we are praying for her and with her, and the hospital let her out so she can come be with us today. Thank you. So uh, it's wonderful to see you, and uh, I know we got some battles here, and we had, if you want to call it a scare, we had a little scare this week, but we smashed the devil right in the mouth, and we're back right on track, and so... uh, I'm thanking God this morning for his goodness, his grace, his mercy, for every single good gift that he has given you and I. Um, I like cowboys and cowboy stories, so I'm reminded of this cowboy who was riding through the prairie. He came up on this other cowboy, and the cowboy that he came up on was laying on the ground with his ear to a wagon wheel track. The one cowboy rides up on his horse, jumps off, and says, what's up? And the man on the ground said, It's a covered wagon. There's an old man driving the team. There's two horses, a black horse and a white horse. There's a young man riding shotgun. There's a woman in the back. She's got a blue bonnet on, and there's a small child with her. The man who just jumped off his horse said, Wow, you can tell all that just by listening to the ground? And the man on the ground said, No, no. It ran over me about a half an hour ago. (laughs) Got a one-sentence sermon for you today, and that's this right here. Those who are broken and afraid. (laughs) Those who are broken and afraid in spirit meet the first requirement of the kingdom of heaven. We got a scripture we want to share with you. Thank you, Mr. Kane Baldale. The very next scripture is this, Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. I told you starting last week, the week before, and there were some times I was preaching and I was thinking about the Beatitudes, and so now we're just kind of trekking through these a little bit. And when I say a little bit, is I'm going to try to whet your appetite today. And what, what Jesus really wants us to do is to go home and read more about the Beatitudes. Read more through chapter 5 in the book of Matthew. This is powerful stuff. Verse 3 says this, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Let's stop right there, and I could spend three hours just meandering through these thoughts. Poor in spirit. Blessed are you today who are broken, who are literally frightened. Blessed are you today who are completely humbled before God and all of your peers. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Today, if you've come into the sanctuary and you're feeling for lack of a better term, down, beat up, these types of things. If you're feeling like you're not worthy, you are correct. You're not worthy all by yourself, but Jesus Christ paid a price for you today to feel worthy. He filled a price, he paid a price for you today to feel like you can walk into this sanctuary and praise his name no matter what kind of chaos is going on on the outside of your brain or on the inside of your mind. Today, he paid that price. Has nothing to do with you and I. Once we can wrap our brains around the fact that this life has nothing to do with me, it has everything to do with Jesus Christ, then our life will be so much better. I don't have the market cornered on this situation. I wake up every single day. Still to this day, I'm 48 years old, been pastoring 24 years, been married 24 years, and full ministry four years, been ordained since the year 2000. I wake up every single day of my life trying to solve the world's problems with my own bare hands. It's ridiculous. Somebody stop me. It's crazy. Why do I do that? I know full and well I'm going to have to stand up here on Sunday morning and give account for my humanity. Why I think the way I do, why I do the things I do, why I get myself in trouble and how I can't get myself out of trouble. But God, say but God. When you're in that place. Where you can't go forward and you can't go backwards and you have to make a decision. You can't go up and you can't go down. You are totally broken. This is the place where Jesus loves for you to be. Because finally, he has your undivided attention. And blessed are you who are poor in spirit today. This ancient Hebrew word for poor, we have a definition 
Mr. Kane, thank you for helping us with our media. Miss Molly's on our camera. Mr. Michael's on our sound. Thank you all for serving today. And the English word is poor. In the Greek, it is makaporio. And then there's a lot of Hebrew initials right after that. There's actually several words that are used throughout the scriptures for the word poor or broken. The definition boils down to this, one who crouches or cowers, beggarly, uh, destitute. If these types of things are ringing a bell with you today, if you resonate with these types of things, you are not afar off, but yours is the kingdom of heaven today. The pauper, rather than just a mere peasant, you see a peasant is actually working and has the capability to work physically anyway and is just doesn't really make a whole lot of money that's a peasant a pauper is somebody who's destitute poor roving about in wretchedness totally broken thoroughly frightened now there have been times in my life my marriage my ministry as a child, as an adult, after all these things I've mentioned to you, tomorrow it's very possible I wake up totally frightened. I hope not in your case, but there are times coming in your life where it's possibly you're going to be totally frightened. My good friend Jerry Leach is here this morning, and I remember when his precious wife passed. And it was the low of the low of the low. I, I, can't, I can't say low enough times to where I could see the look in his eyes, he wasn't sure he even wanted to take his next step forward in faith. Totally frightened. Thoroughly frightened. Exclusively relying on mendency. Am I saying that word right? It doesn't matter if I am or not. You can read it for yourself. Mendency. <laughs> It means totally dependent on a handout. I'm totally dependent on somebody today giving me lunch. <laughs> Mrs. Lucky will appreciate this. Uh, my good friend, uh, Mr. Bruce, will appreciate this. I showed up today because our boys are going to the FCA football camp. I told my son and my nephew and Jalan, I said, I'm going to drop you off. I'm going to drop you off. Go in and say hi to all the coaches, a couple of the boys, and I'm getting me one of those McMuffin sandwiches before church. I did all of those things except for I did not get my McMuffin sandwich today. I was totally dependent upon getting there for the handout, and I missed the handout. This poor in spirit means... If God's not giving it to you, you're not getting it. <laughs> and guess what? If God's not giving it to me, I don't want it. I only want what Jesus wants. And it's okay with him. As a matter of fact, in Matthew chapter 5, when he starts tearing through the Sermon on the Mount, he starts with this sentence, Blessed are the poor in spirit because they will inherit the kingdom of heaven. We're going to get back into the kingdom of heaven in, 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 in the weeks to come. But in short, the kingdom of heaven is not a geographical place on earth, of course. It's not even a place where inside that geographical place, it's, it's reduced to those people who live in a certain place. It is wherever God rules. And I want him and I need him to rule in my life. It's wherever God leads that is who has inherited the kingdom of heaven. Whoever has confessed with our mouth, believe in our heart that he is Lord, then he has saved us. And all of a sudden, we have inherited the kingdom of heaven. Friend, and I'm... Stay focused, Tom. No, who cares about all that? Let's go right to where my brain's going. We'll call it the Holy Spirit. When you are in that place... You can't go forward, you can't go backwards and up and down. And you've got thoughts that you know are not your thoughts and they're terrible and they're negative and they're, 
They're tearing you up. And you don't know where you are and you don't know where you've been. You feel like Jesus is a thousand miles from nowhere. Blessed are the thoroughly frightened. For they will inherit the kingdom of heaven. And friend, blah, 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 all this. And I'm standing here before you and I'm a minister of the gospel. And I still can't thoroughly explain to you all that is at our fingertips in the kingdom of heaven. The power, the glory, the shock, the awe, the love, the grace, the mercy. Those who are poor in spirit, those are the ones who receive, who inherit the kingdom of heaven. I've been with friends of mine and they're Parents have passed, and in the will, they get $100,000 or $400,000. And when I find out about this, I chum around with them a little bit. <laughs> and I've heard their stories, and I've watched them spend their money. I've tried to help them spend their money. They're not interested in what I want to do with their money. When you inherit the kingdom of heaven. God has for you more than you can imagine. Sally McCraney talked about going on a shopping spree today, and I'm thinking, she said something about if you don't like to go shopping or want to go shopping, give your money to somebody. All right, here I am. I want to touch a nerve this morning because I, I want you to know that no matter how you walked into this sanctuary, when we talk about the poor in spirit, those that are beat down, totally, thoroughly frightened, those that are destitute, you will inherit. These are those who will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Yes, eternal heaven with God our Father. But also, listen close, here we go, right here, right now, joy in the midst of whatever you're facing. Uh, um, security in the middle of the chaos that you're looking at. Love, grace, and mercy that floods your soul, and you're looking around saying, my world is falling apart. Why do I feel so good about life? It's because you have inherited the kingdom of heaven. And God is powerful in his glory. My man came. We got some pictures, right? Here's the top three or four or five things in the world that people are totally frightened of. A triple galaxy collision. I would like to thank the internet because I didn't even know I was supposed to be thoroughly frightened of a triple galaxy collision. Sometimes sermon prep is hard on a man's soul. <laughs> and I read this and I thought, oh my God. Goodness, what's going on here? And they said, oh, yes, as a matter of fact, if you read online, there's this other galaxy that's about to collide with our galaxy. Matter of fact, there was a galaxy collision in 2007, and when this happens, all oh, hell is going to break loose, and the world's going to come apart. And grab a chair and hang on. And then I found the most disturbing news of all, this galaxy collision that our galaxy is going to collide with is going to happen in about four and a half billion years. Whew, I calmed right down. Whew, and I said, dear God, bless my great-grandchildren to the 20th power and protect them. <laughs> this world is just all about scaring you to death. Yeah, I read that whole entire article, and they wait till the last part to say, yeah, and scientists, they think it's going to happen in four and a half billion years from now. Okay, I just wasted five minutes of my life. <laughs> Thank you, Annie. I love you. <laughs> Everybody else is just too afraid to laugh out loud. They're like, he's silly, and I don't want to be caught silly. Thoroughly frightened. There are people that are thoroughly frightened over this thing. Okay. Oh, we have another picture for you. Now, this is super cool stuff, the Bolton Strid. Anybody ever heard of it? Yorkshire, England. There's a port, this river at some points is only six feet wide. 
but there are portions of this river that have a 100% mortality rate. That means every single person who has fallen in this river during these certain stretches at six feet wide, the thing looks like it's just nice and flowing and it's beautiful. Well, the problem is it's about 30 to 50 feet deep. The undercurrent sucks you down and bashes your body against the rocks, and they never even find you again. So when people go to Yorkshire, they're like thoroughly frightened of this river to get close to it. Oh, they step up to it, and then those who fall in never come back. Interesting. Next picture we want to show you. I cannot pronounce that name of that jellyfish, but when it bites you, <laughs> uh, you will go paralyzed, and for the rest of your life, somehow, somehow something gets in your brain, and you live the rest of your life with this certainty of impending doom. So I wanted to show you a picture of it in case you go out here to Fort Island Beach and you see one of these, get away from it. Next picture we want to show you. <laughs> I can't even say this with a straight face, but it's real deal. Brain-eating amoeba. Believe it or not, they're finding these in tap water in Louisiana. You know, for a while, you thought I was just messing around, wasting time, but I'm giving you legit information this morning. You know, if I lived in Louisiana right now, I'd walk up to my tap water and I'd go. <laughs> I don't even know if we have another picture. Ooh. Liberia. Okay, hold. You see that? You see the, where, where that's at? See the green, you see Africa and you see the little green place? I want to give you the heads up on it. I just want you to see this. It's interesting because I like to know where things are at when we're talking about them. Next slide. Okay, this is the west point of Monrovia in Liberia. Okay, beautiful drop dead, gorgeous ocean views. Monrovia, Liberia happens to be the single most poorest city in the world. The average wage of a professional worker is a buck 92 a day, $1.92 a day. Doctors and lawyers are making about $2.50 a day. Teachers are making about a buck 70 a day. Poor. You got another picture of Monrovia. This is what their beaches look like. There are places in town, in the suburbs. Here's a picture of one of the suburbs. That's like, that's middle class Monrovia right there. I flipped through a number of pictures this week and found trash piled three and four feet high right outside people's homes. That's poor and that's broken. Back to the frightened. Show us that jellyfish just for a moment. Actually, it was the river. Let's go to the river. Here's the river. I was sitting in my office flipping through some of this stuff on my phone. This is the thought that came to me, and this is the very center of our message today. I thought to myself, after I learned about this stretch of stream, it's not even a river, it's a stream. I thought to myself how careful I would walk up to the stream. How respectful of the stream I would be. How I would tell my children, whoa, 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 whoa. Everybody stand back. How I'd hold my wife's hand and not let her get in front of me. How I would educate my family before we even got to this spectacular wonder of the world. And how I would gently observe and kindly give it its space.
And then I thought to myself, how many times did I just take? My sister chastised me this week for not even holding a Bible. I'm getting a Bible, total. She said, you stand up there and preach the gospel. You don't even have a Bible in your hand. I love it when my sister moves to town. How many times have I not approached this holy word exactly like I would approach the Bolton Strid with fear and trembling, with humility, love and care? Hoping, wanting, wanting to take a glimpse at the wonder and the glory and the majesty. Savoring every word, every look, every story. When's the last time I approached God like that? Like spiritually speaking. We need to move from one place to another in the spiritual realm and move closer to God and away from things like brain eating amoeba. Why don't I do that? I know what's right and I know what's wrong and why do I just dance and flirt with what's wrong? I sat in my chair and I thought, how many times in my life have I made decisions and never even cracked this book open? How many times in my life have I made decisions and not got before God in a manner that is totally broken, totally respectful, thoroughly frightened? Life is frightening. But God, he says, those who are broken in spirit will inherit the kingdom of God today. The kingdom of God is yours. You can start with reading or you can start with praying and meditating. Both of those are two good places to start depending upon your, where you're at in your faith walk. But those, those two are what needs to be done every day of our life. And we have to come before this word like we would step up to something that we know, we know deserves our undivided attention. Now, I'm famous for preaching. It's not God's intention that we run around and are afraid of him. I'm not afraid of God. I'm not scared of God. But there's this whole other aspect. There's like this fine line there. There's this whole other aspect on, on the other side of that fine line, and that's this right here. The Bible is pretty clear. Fear God. Yes, respect. When I was growing up, I had a healthy fear of my father. The key word is healthy. He didn't beat me. He spanked my bottom blue several times. There's a difference. You see, there's a healthy fear there. Now, how many times when I was growing up, I'd be like, my dad will never know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My mom always knew, and then she told my dad. It's a vicious cycle. Well, how many times do we live our life thinking, God will never know? Or, I live under grace. Well, that's a whole other sermon. If you want to stay till 3 o'clock, we can crack that can open right now. Oh, I, I don't live under the law. That's true, we don't live under the law. But there's something to be said about having a healthy fear of the Lord. 
those who are totally broken, those who are poor in spirit. This happens to be part one of maybe part three or four. I've got so much stuff in my brain. And I think God wants us to camp out here for a week or two. As for today, it's my prayer, my hope that we can approach his holy word with fear and trembling, a healthy respect, poor in spirit. There are two schools of thought on this particular scripture right here on the Beatitudes. The one school of thought is this, is that these are not things that we are to seek or to achieve or to be like. These are just, when you read through the Beatitudes, this is Jesus just saying, if you are that, this is for you. If you are that already, maybe from birth or maybe from, from an incident, if you are that, then this is for you. The other school of thought is that these are things that we should seek. These are attributes that we should apply for, that we should chase after, that, she, that, that we should want they are attitudes I'm of the perspective and I think it's both I think it's okay if every day I wake up in my life and I say dear Lord help me to stay humble and broken and poor in spirit before you and on the days when I'm feeling 10 feet tall and bulletproof we got a picture of the richest city in America I think don't we Cain Big, bright, beautiful color of New York City, baby. Now, between Beijing, Tokyo, New York City, they all, uh, depending on what year and month it is, they rival being the richest cities in the world. There are 107 billionaires that live in New York City. 370,000 millionaires. And almost 100 centi millionaires, those who have $100 million or more. I'm thinking about moving there next week. Making some friends. But I don't have to do that. Because those who are poor in spirit inherit much more than all these things and cash and stuff and homes and cars and bikes and all this stuff that we humans chase. I chase them. You chase them. We're in the same boat. But at the end of the day, I want to chase this the most. And this other... Uh, picture. Thank you, Kane. See, on days when you're feeling like New York City, I want to remind myself, no, Tom, no, Tom, you are really Monrovia, Libya, whether you know it or not, because I'm nothing without Jesus. Would you please stand with me? Would my prayer team, please come. Thank you, worship team. Today, if it's your desire, it's your desire to kind of seek out or let some of what was said today unravel in your heart and your mind, kind of un unfold, kind of hang out there, kind of go, let's inquire. If you got of the mindset, I want to inquire about these things, about this something. I'm not, it's, it's silly. I don't know what it is. It's something. It's something. I'm not encouraging you to break yourself down that sort of thing I'm just encouraging you to come to God with a humble heart thoroughly frightened and not not the afraid frightened but the but the respectful before any great challenge in your life there's a level of anticipation of anxiety there's a level of something going on in your brain Rise first FCA camp or not? And there's a level of, oh my goodness, this is about to happen. Some of the finest athletes on the face of the planet. And I'm about to see them. I'm about to get a taste. <laughs> Wapoosh! There's a level of thoroughly frightened. There's a level of something. That's okay. But you don't have to be afraid because God says those who are poor in spirit will inherit the kingdom of God. 
And I can't wait till we start talking about that in a few weeks. Then we can look back on this message and then you can look at that message and you can say, that's where I'm headed. These gifts, this power, this glory. Today, I just got to ask you, please get what you came for. Allow God to finish what he started in your life this morning. Every day we wake up is just one small step. It's just one day, one small step. My wife reads to me all the time her Jesus Calling book, and it's an extraordinary book. It's a great picture, picture of what goes on. And God gives us day by day a nightfall so that we can sleep and rest and get up and get ready for the next day. He doesn't give us more than what we can handle. He allows us to get some rest every night, or we should. (laughs) We should rest in his presence and wake up the next day ready to come before his holy word with respect and desire today if you'd like to make Jesus your Lord and Savior if that's you today if you want him to take the lead in your life if that's you today please repeat this prayer after me matter of fact twofold prayer for you salvation and healing if you need healing in your body for any reason could be could be emotionally spiritually could be physically and for salvation if that's you today repeat this prayer after me dear Jesus I love you heal my body save my soul thank you for dying on a cross for me shedding your blood for me I love you in Jesus name Amen. Spend just a moment in God's presence today. My friends are here to pray with you and for you, not to get in your business, just to say a prayer of blessing over you, healing, salvation, faith, whatever it is that you'd like prayer for. Allow the presence of God in your life this morning and enjoy this moment. Good morning, church. I just wanted to share with you a scripture on giving and offerings. Uh, reading out of Second Corinthians, starting at verse uh, Second Corinthians nine, starting at verse six, it says, "Remember this: a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully." And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. That good deeds will be remembered forever. So it tells me to when we give our, prepare our offerings for the week, to give out of a generous and thankful heart and reap God's blessings. And uh, there's five different ways that you can give in the offerings. We have boxes as you come out of the um, sanctuary. We have boxes by the door. Uh, You can give online. And uh, all of this information, you can find it in our- Check in, um, check in right now on social media, like this, boop, on your phone to River Life Church. If you're new to River Life Church, please grab a blue connect card from the chair in front of you and turn it into Peter and Betty Byers at the front desk. Uh, membership day. class, July 27, 7 p.m. in my office. It's a Wednesday night. God bless your souls. I've got one lens out in my glasses and my face is a mess from riding the bike behind a semi truck today. Hallelujah. Good morning, River Life Church. It's time again to start gathering donations for our Ask annual if you would children's like to donate. Christmas shop. Unwrapped new gifts to go into our shop. Uh, are unwrapped, and everything that you can donate and give. If you do not uh, want to go out and shop, donations of money would be great. So come and help us out, and let's give our children a lot of things to shop for. Good morning, men. I just want to remind you of our men's fellowship prayer meeting tomorrow at noon. Come join with us. God bless you. River Life Church, where in the world are you? There you are. So, motorcycle riders, July the 23rd, leaving Hardy's at 10 a.m. Hey God bless your soul. Women of all ages. 
Thrive Women's Conference is coming up in October. If you're interested, you can see myself or Pastor Tracy. Our first deposit of $100 is due, due by July 20th. It's a time you do not want to miss. So see one of us and get all the information. River Life Church on Sunday, July 30. Sunday, July 30. Bring yourself and a friend. Let's try to pack the house. Our goal number is 250 people on a Sunday morning. A couple weeks ago, we had 223 or something like that. Let's just keep Real inching Church, up as we head into fall. God bless you. In regards to volunteering, uh, leading in kids ministry or youth ministry, we want to thank you. We are having an appreciation day. Please see Pastor Jen or myself for all the details. It will be on August 13th. And if you want all the rest of the details, come see us and we will get them to you. We thank you so much for your dedication to kids ministry and youth ministry.